And this is a bad miss because I didn't follow the system. Me in editing as well. Get your shit together. So today was a rough trading day because the market didn't really give it to us. Uh, I'm a little bit frustrated at myself because especially looking back through editing, I noticed that I spent a lot of time talking about discipline and following the system and I followed the system to a loss and then didn't follow the system to allow it to pay me to reduce the loss. So the system is performing exactly like it should on a losing day and I didn't make as much money. If you are here to watch a trader go through, for better or for worse, the successes and failures of the trading day uh, and the battle that happens internally, then you're in the right place and you should probably subscribe because I post one of these every trading day. It's my diary. Um, if you're not new to the channel, then you understand why my frustration exists. So how about we just get to it? Here we are, a minute away from the open. I'm looking at the S&P 500, that's my macro indicator. We are overbought, really. So a pullback today is no surprise. Um, it's the severity of the pullback that matters. If we, uh, if we end up in that category, do people get, um, did they get scared and get out very, very quickly and harshly? Because that'll, that'll change the tone of the direction um, to where instead of a pullback, it could just be, oh, okay, we're going down again. I we have a lot more news to come out over earnings season and stuff, so I'm not, I'm not certain that today's gonna be a horrible day, but we're just gonna trade what the market gives us in five seconds. We're gonna see how it wants to stretch its legs. <clears throat> Ugh. All right. Not my favorite open, but we do have a little bit of uh, clearing out to the upside. So the volatility is there. It's way better whenever you get these ranges in the beginning. Because the uh, coming out of the open, if you have this little tiny range there, the trading range kind of indicates that you might have a tough day for uh, breakout trading, volatility trading. But this isn't bad. If we can settle into a nice middle range and get on the top of this or the bottom, depending on where it wants to settle, going down into the open, it wouldn't surprise me if it flips over. But let's see. That is the, the main thing with the uh, systematic approach that I take is I have to start off saying, I don't know where the market's gonna go. You can have a feeling and you can be right more often than not, but you have to admit that you don't know or you put yourself in a position where you get overconfident and you start losing money. <clears throat> Trade in a way that you don't know which way the market's gonna go and you will put yourself in a trading position to where you have um, better chances of a win if the market goes your way. Overconfidence is just taking a market order right now and letting it ride, baby. And that's a good way to lose your account. FYI. All right, let's get this on. Don't, I didn't get it on my personal again. This is driving me insane, guys. I've got bills to pay. Ah! 
I mean, it's great. We got a winning trade. That's amazing. Oh, man. That drives me insane. It drives me insane. All right, so we pulled a win here. Look at the... We actually got positive slippage given to us. Makes me wonder what I would have gotten over here, but I'll just have to keep wondering. So we actually got some positive slippage. This takes us up to 152.5. Uh, who knows what the rest of the day is gonna bring, but we are gonna trade it. That's for sure. Um, starting off with a couple hundred dollars. That means if we take a loss today, then, and no other trades, we're, we're, our loss is already in our uh, daily allowed losses. Not that I'm planning for the worst, but you know, you have to. All right, so that was a quick buck. And that was the slip to the downside that I kind of thought might happen given the uh, going into the open. You always see some volatility, but you know, there was a lot of weight there. Notice this position at the top is still on because uh, it's still within my trading window for the top side. I do have a top side over on the other account too. I just didn't get the uh, the benefit of getting into this one. But you know what? If I put in, if I put the trades on on my personal first every time, then I'm missing the trades over here, and you guys have nothing to watch but a big zero and me giving you a screenshot and a smile, and that's no fun. But uh, yeah, so far this video cost me a couple hundred bucks. Love it. Love it. All right, so we've got our S pattern coming out of the open. Um, you probably can't see this on higher levels, but this is a pretty reliable 10 second pattern. It, de it depends on if it comes down and goes up and then comes down, or if it goes up and comes down. And But it typically creates this range in, in a weird, uh, this is a, a Z pattern. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of those things that you can kind of expect to see nearly every morning. So if you found a trading system that took advantage of this pattern a little bit, then um, you know there's something there. You would have trading opportunities at least at least three times a week. Yeah. That being said, this looks like it's building up to roll over. You kind of notice the coil here and the weight came down, spiked up. It's fighting for this level here, and it depends on whether it wants to win or not. Um, whether we're in a sideways market or a down market. It feels like it's gonna be a down market. Yeah, and there's the, the down move. All the indicators, this is like chart reading 101. Negative, negative. You know, it rolled over here. You had your, uh, your quick zip back to test. And then it just this, this battle right here that had kind of this negative slant. You can kind of see that you're going to start leaning over a little bit. Now, who knows how low it's going to go, but it feels heavy. It certainly feels like if it fails here and goes down, then it'll probably break through. Um, and I kind of hope that it does, if I'm being honest, because... Hold on, I had to cancel this order over here that I canceled, but it just didn't take it off. Yeah, I hope that it does because that would set the tone for a direction. And one of the things that I really don't want is a sideways market. I don't want us to do battle just all morning right here because that gets frustrating and hard to trade. Yeah, if we could pick a direction, then... Uh, you know, we have a much better chance because it doesn't matter pretty much however you're trading, breakout, counter trend, anytime there's an actual trend, a direction the market wants to go, you're going to do better in a trending market. You know, counter trends will tell you that a sideways market is great, but the truth is they, they get eaten 
at some point, right? And it is if you place it at a certain point and you can just get a bounce back and forth. But, you know, in a trending market, then you have, you've got a direction. You can come back and you can, you can if you're counter trending, you can come back and you can see these things and you can start selling at these resistance levels to go down even more and you get paid more than the range bound. So trend is your friend in nearly every scenario. All right, let me see if I can get this next trade on before we miss it. We missed four trades just yet last week. Um, a couple of them were just because of doing videos like this. A couple of them, probably three of them was because uh, Looking back at the tape, about three of them was because I was uh, talking and analyzing and loving the trade setup on Friday. Loved the setup that was getting ready to happen so much that I didn't take the trade in time because it was just a beautiful chart. So, you know, what do you do with that, right? Make good content, be happy with it. Let me see if I can get this trade on too. Okay. Yep. Load this one up. All right. Don't know how it's going to play out, but we've got things in position. So if I take a look back, our near term, if we go up here, this is the more dangerous trade. Uh, going down is, is uh, a better trade to take. It depends on the uh, story getting there. But as you can see, the reason why is because we, we have all of this negative going on. But there's no near term resistance. And I say near term because this is the 10 second chart. We're literally just going back overnight, right? But if you look at the top side, if we hit this, we, we do have some resistance points that we're battling that could cause a fight, and that makes it uh, a lesser chance of winning. This, though, this story here is not as convincing. Um, hopefully it coils up here before it wants to break down, but we have a coil here and a coil here, and that might mean that we come down and take this out. So I'm going to trade the system stance and uh, I mean that's it's what we have to do that's that's the entire point of of doing this uh, this uh, entire elite trader funding challenge is to uh, basically Follow the system as best as possible. This brings up a point, by the way. Following the system, I, I did some analysis um, because it's nearing the end of the month, you know, and obviously we have today to put into the books for the monthly report. Uh, one of the things that you have to do as a trader, and that leads me into another thing, but I'll stay on topic. One of the things that you have to do as a trader is you have you have to come up with an edge and when in doing so and I have a very specific approach and, and I'll make a video on that but to discover your edge in the market that edge exists under certain conditions and that's your that's your kind of strategy that's that's your uh, approach and I call it a system but other people would just call it a strategy but if you if you do that you have to measure your own performance versus the strategy performance. It's very key that you do that because your strategy doesn't care if, if this is bunching up or if it possibly could bunch up here and battle back and stop you out. Like this chart is saying, the strategy says take the trade no matter what and over time you'll be fine. Me as a trader, 
I'm coming in with emotion. I don't want to lose money, especially on, on the first day out. Uh, I look at the trade, and this isn't a discretionary trade that I would take right now. It, it's just not, because the setup is not the ideal situation. Um, the system says take the damn trade. So at the end of the month, I go through and I measure, the, because there are some times that I stay out, that I use discretionary trading and say, I don't like this trade, I'm just gonna stay out. Um, my system over, the, over October actually was up a couple grand in, in a sideways market. And I did not perform as well in a sideways market because I got in the way. So it's one of those things that you have to think about. If you have a strategy that's clearly defined, how did that strategy perform? And are you allowing your strategy to maximize itself? And the answer for me is no, I'm not. Well, let's see if we start off with our loss. Time exit would say, yeah, we would take it here, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, this is gonna be a loss. <clears throat> All right. So this is one of those things where the discretionary, the discretionary would, would tell you that you should not take this trade. And the system says that you should. I'm trading the system because if this fails for the sideways markets that we get in, every time I do the analysis, I get in a situation that I underperform my system, which is my point. And taking a loss in the middle of that, it sucks. But the truth is, I, if I don't take the trades, I never have those five or six hundred dollar days. I've always got shorter days uh, of wins. I always end up in a situation where I'm losing you know, on the losing days, I'm losing more. And on the winning days, I'm winning less. And the, that's funny, the market is now acting like it wants to roll over. I'm currently sideways right now. This is the worst case scenario. And I'm looking over, I'm looking at these candles and this, this candle spread right now, if it doesn't actually roll over, this candle spread right here is really rare. Like if it, if it goes back up and sideways, seeing the market only do this during this time period is rare. So the chances that it's gonna just go ahead and roll over are pretty high. And it looks like it wants to. Yeah, there's your win right there. And this is part of the game. You come out, you, you take your loss, by the end of the week, who knows? We could still make 153. So, yeah, that leads into the other thing. The, here's the thing that hurts, by the way. Because I took that loss on my personal account too. But I missed the win on my personal account because I was trading over here. This, this is that balancing act where I've got to, I've got to figure out how to get it together because the market's not going to, the market doesn't care that I'm recording this. All right, so we did stretch our legs down, but this is part of that loss scenario where it's just not a good setup. Pulls back, stops you out, and then decides it wants to roll over part of the system and obviously I have to uh, mark that yeah so the next step is talking about what it takes to become a trader. A lot of you out there are already trading um, through the comments and, and all of the conversations. I've, I've learned that you know the base people who watch this video 
you're already trading. You're just trying to tighten up some ideas or look for some fresh ideas and approaches to the market. Um, yeah, becoming a trader is, is a journey for sure. My journey started in uh, 2003 trading stocks, Microsoft. And the, the first thing that you think is that, okay, I just have to pick tops and bottoms. Well, you can pick tops and bottoms, but you're gonna be wrong most of the time. You know, swing trading is a thing. You have to get good at it, but the market never looks exactly the same. So the only thing that you can do is get in front of a chart and watch it play out. And that's, that's it. That's, that's all you can do. And uh, you're going to take losses. You go to school and you're going to take, you're going to take losses or you go to school, you're going to, you're, you're losing the money to put into tuition and you're hoping that it pays off. But whenever you become a trader, you're losing the money that you have to give the market to actually trade the market. All right, so we are one trade in, and I'll get back to that point. We're one trade in, or two trades in today, but we're one loss in. And if we, if we end up with another loss today, then I have to evaluate a lot actually, because the, that 4% chance that we get two losses in a day is, uh, well, it would have happened really a lot more than it actually should. So let me get these trades on. Trading the system, and I'm probably picking up discipline to trade the system at exactly the wrong time, but you just you just don't know. All right, chipping away. I got some pretty good credit on that. Chipping away at this loss now. So. One of the, the hardest thing that I had to do was to take a loss. And, and I did, I ended up, I came out and it's, it's small now, but uh, I took a $400 loss on my first trade because I went into it not thinking about all the things. I just went into it saying, okay, I'm gonna take this trade. And then it moved against me and I had no plan. And that's death <clears throat> because you, you have, when it moves against you, you have all of these emotions flooding you and it's all fear-based and you seize up because you don't want to lose money so you don't want to get out you have no plan as to where to get out and you're afraid of being wrong more wrong because then you just know that if you get out now it's at the bottom and the market's going to recover and guess what probably i've seen that so many times the market legit recovers when I finally hit my, my emotional breaking point, historically. So you have to be willing to lose, willing to pay for your tuition by taking those losses, willing to put in the work to recognize that you are not a loser because of a loss, that you're growing and learning but that it's okay to be wrong. You have to be willing to take that next trade, and that's hard. Taking that next trade is just awful because two losses in a row, you know? Nobody wants to keep losing, but you have to be willing to push through that. You have to be willing to let your profit succeed. Now, this, this system is not a good example because this is, this is statistic and mathematically based. Take these trades and let the system play out over time. But you have to be willing on, especially your discretionaries, to let the market continue to pay you rather than say, okay, enough. 
and have the fear of losing your profits. Let your winners run, which is extremely hard because you have that same emotion come up. And that emotion is, it's fear-based <clears throat> because you, you, you don't want to lose what you see in the P&L. I deal with this on a daily basis anyway. If I'm if I'm four hundred or five hundred dollars up over here, why do I want to take that next trade? Because the system would just statistics would say that if I take that if I take that fifth or sixth trade, I have a seventy five percent chance of winning, even though that trade is is a ninety five percent chance of winning because I've had a string of wins, and I know this, but the system says take it because the. You, you have to let the market pay you. And that's it. So the other thing is that you have to be disciplined, and I've said this a lot, but you have to be disciplined to record all of these things like this. This is my, my trading diary that I review literally every day as I edit before I put it on YouTube. And I notice things that I don't notice in real time. I will go back and I will look at this loss and I'll tell myself, was this a good trade or did I do it wrong? What could I have done differently? And if the answer is nothing, then it's a good loss. And you don't know this about yourself because if you're, if you're taking good losses and you're taking good wins, then you have to know that you're actually doing a good job, win or lose. And that only is, it comes with the discipline of taking the notes that it takes, even if it's pen and paper, which I do both. I have notes all over the place, um, but I have an Excel sheet that I keep track of. I've got these videos that I go through and I look at how I analyze the candles and in analyzing the candles, you know, am I right or wrong more often than not? And should I allow myself to be more discretionary um, and break away from the system? Or, or how, how do I keep track of those trading decisions? And as long as I know that I can keep track of the trading decisions differently, and I have the discipline to actually keep two different ledgers of trading, then I can do it. I can I can take a discretionary trade here or there. <clears throat> but you have to do that work. If you're not willing to put in the work to the paperwork side to analyze yourself, you won't get better. You know, you, you can't go to, this is funny that I say this, you can't go out to YouTube and find the solution. You can go and you can find ideas. You can go and you can look and see what people are doing and relate it to what you're doing and use that to possibly get better. But that all starts with you being able to look at yourself because this goes into the other point. Another major thing in becoming a trader, like really a trader, is to understand what type of market that you like to trade. What are you good at? Everybody's different. Do you like to win a lot and lose a little? And whenever you lose, you're okay taking a bigger loss, but you want that win more often. You need a statistical based, mathematical based system. And you have to do the work for sure to make sure that your win rate exceeds the break even point that's higher than 50 50. If you're taking a bigger loss, that's a style. That's my style for now, but maybe you're a trend follower. <clears throat> maybe you're a, maybe you're a counter trend. Maybe, maybe you like, um, you feel when things move in a certain way, maybe you have a feeling that, you know what, this feels cheap and you want to buy as long as you're not catching a falling knife. When you go and you do that, you're identifying the types of trades that you naturally want. That's the style of trader that you are. And that goes into becoming a trader. You have to identify your own style and then learn everything that you can around that. But it all comes back to you being able to look at yourself and chisel out of this rough stone, this future profitable, consistently profitable trader 
that is able to grow. And every time you look at yourself, you're carving yourself a little bit more. <clears throat> so those are the keys. Another tidbit, another tidbit that I wouldn't, uh, it's not on a soapbox here, is that I see these people out there that go through and they they have these screeners and they want to they want to trade 20 different markets on any given day um you you can't affect every market is different the participants the market makers you don't know the tenor of a market until you stare at one market for a while so i tend to pick and it used to be the uh, the es but for volatility reasons, I like NASDAQ now. So I really focus in on NASDAQ first. And, you know, the reason for that is because I start to know the NASDAQ. I don't really like this next trade. But this is the system, right? See, we have a double bottom and this is kind of like getting weak. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this next trade. Maybe if we went to the upside, then it would try to break out and that seems like an overextension, but a double bottom right there with this kind of weak market just tells me that we're probably going to sit on another. See, this goes back to, uh, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put it on over here too because I'm a glutton for punishment. Because I told myself I was going to trade this system. All right, this is not good. This is reaching for the top of a range bound market. These are not trades that I want to take. Trade the system. Trade the system. See? Here's what sucks. I got credit for $100 over here. I did not get that credit over here. This is... This is the frustrating part. Now I did get way more at the beginning of the day. Um, it's the first time I actually saw a positive slippage, but on, on Elite Trader account. But I did not get that credit here on this trade. And that bothers me because this takes us, that, that trade would have taken us in the 400 range, which is, is the optimal range for the trading system over the course of a day. So let's see what happened here. That's open. Thirty-eight, forty. No, that's yesterday. No, oh, I'm looking at all. I need filled. Okay, filled, filled, filled. Twenty-two. Very, very frustrating, to say the least. It's still a win, and you mark it as a win, which I'll do. And I got the win over here, so I do feel better about that. Uh, <clears throat> 
That should have put us in the fours, though. I think we made two bucks on that. I'll have to go back and look at the tape. But I think we made $2 on this trade. That should be $102, according to what I made over here. Um, yeah. So this should be at minus four, and we have a seven o'clock trade coming up. So the seven o'clock trade has no news. Yeah, frustrating decision. Let's see. Kind of a boring market, really. I mean, other than taking that stupid loss, I knew it was gonna go down. I did not like the setup. So how I'll evaluate myself on this is that I was reading this correctly, and I'll give my myself kudos for that in my in my post game analysis. I was reading this correctly. This this was a chart setup that doesn't bode well for a breakout. It just wasn't, you know. So I still thought that we were going to go down, and we did. But every once in a while, you know, it takes a little bit longer than than the breakout would say. All right, so we stretched our legs to the upside. We still have a downside trade on there. Yeah, what? this is just a really not good market. <sighs> It's frustrating. But you know what? This is another thing. You're not always going to get a, a good trading environment. So you can't force it either. Like if you wanted to be a discretionary trader, you could come in here, I could look at this and I would be like, okay, all right, well, you know, if we really, if we break out above this candle, then we're probably going to stretch our legs up here a little bit. And we've got all of this, but look at that. Look how flat that is. That's not, it's not a good trade, but you can justify anything. So you have to be careful. And you have to understand that that's a range bound environment. You've got a double bottom, which if you want to extend this down, you've got three, possibly four related to this, which makes this trade hellish, um, which I'll take off. Or should I trade the system? No, not in this case, because we already took a win. Don't get greedy. So, so yeah, you, you have a horrible setup there. You're reaching up and it's choppy. There's literally no direction to this market. And as a discretionary trader, you have to be willing to say, Okay, this sucks. So if you flip it over to a counter trend, you could get burned because this could reach down, which let's measure this other trade real quick for the system. It's reaching down. I don't like the setup at all. I didn't like the other setup, so I stayed away from that. But it's reaching down and it's already reached down and, f and failed to go down. So is this, is this a counter trend market? We don't know. You don't know, like your, your probabilities are, are not good because this right here still looks like it wants to break through and go down. We'll see if this flares up, then, then yeah. Yeah, let's see. Look at that. And that's one of the keys that I look at, and anybody who watches this on a daily basis knows that. These candles, they're not completely dead. They haven't completely died. They're just disinterested. And Although this is a coil up that looks like it wants to break through and go down. 
It depends on what happens here. There you go. You've got down, you've got coil up. You got your flare out. All these things that I look for. All of a sudden the downside trade doesn't look too bad. Make a fool out of me. Yeah, there it is. See, this happens every time. And if I would have traded the system, this would have been profitable too. I would have had two seven o'clock trades put on that would have profited. But I talked myself out of it again. So, although I could have talked myself out here and saved myself a lot. This is the battle, guys. This is the battle that you have to do is measuring, did you do the right thing? This is a negative. I took a loss earlier today that I did the right thing on. That is a good loss, and this is a bad miss. Because I didn't follow the system. Because I already took a loss. I didn't want to take another one. You're seeing it in real time. Me in editing as well. You're seeing it happen. Get your shit together.